Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or uh, good morning night, as they call yung mga madaling araw na nanonood. So, whatever time you're watching this, okay? So, in this lecture, we're going to talk about post-colonial architecture. And um, may kita na natin uh, ang summary niyan dito sa... mga pictures na ito. So, that's most, um, that's most of it. Uh, civic buildings, plantations, pa rin, uh, mansions, residences. So, ganyan yung may kita nating itsura. So, part of the post-colonial architecture. So, when we say post-colonial, this is after the occupation of the European uh, colonizers. So, and uh, this was the time when United States of America started asserting their independence and uh, pinalayas na nila yung mga French and yung mga British na uh, colonizers doon sa land and they claimed the land. So, antebellum architecture is what we call the pre-war architecture. Uh, looking at the word itself, ante which means pre or before and bellum uh, pertaining to war so kaya doon ang galing yung name ng uh, antebellum or pre-war architecture the war that we are talking about here is the american civil war in 1861 so ito yung time na um pinaalis na yung mga colonizers and uh nagkaroon na ng independence ang uh, ang Americans, ang United States. And uh ilang decades after that there is a civil war. So during this time um the Americans they want to um explore kung anong style ba yung gusto nilang ma-define yung kanilang culture. So Ang antebellum architecture is that uh, mix between the Greek revival and neoclassical styles and also yung mga previous na plantation designs uh, that they were that they were familiar with. So uh, present pa rin naman dito yung mga plantations. So this one is uh, Barrington Hall. So it was built in 1839 in uh, Georgia. Uh, it was built by Willis Ball. So, we're going to look into the elements here. So, again, uh, itong mga halls na to, mga, so, uh, mga estates pa rin ito, given to, um, uh, given or being passed to uh, descendants. And uh, this one is, uh, may kita na natin, ang common dito, uh, unlike sa, unlike sa yung mga plantation na, na dalawang floors it's missing a balcony here <laughs> uh, in a way pero ito yung naging prevalent na style um nagkaroon ng pagbabalik dun sa classical elements that's why it's being called neoclassical kasi you are incorporating the classical elements like yung classical um yung mga columns and then it is also raised as uh, the greek and roman temples were So, very grand yung, yung dating niya. And may kita natin yung mga modern houses uh, sa United States. May, may resemblance pa rin dito and dun sa mga plantation styles. Pero antebellum is uh, most of them ganto yung itsura. You have columns that are spanning two floors. And then diretso dun sa, sa structure supporting the roof. So, very bulky and grand siya, but it's also classy uh, as being perceived during the time. So, another example here, Corinthian columns naman yung ginamit, again, spanning dalawang floors. Um, this is the Governor John L. Manning House or the Milford Plantation. So, itong mga structures na to are still being built in plantations kasi ongoing pa rin naman. yung uh, production ng goods or agricultural produce uh, during the time. So, it was built by Nathaniel F. Potter between 1839 and 1841. Itong mga time na to, these structures, uh, 
akala nila it, it's going to be a long-lasting peace kasi nga nag-assert na nga ng independence ang United States only to experience another war. And uh, na-threaten din itong mga houses na to and mga mansions and plantations. Na-threaten din sila to be destroyed during the Civil War, which is um, a civil war among Americans then. So, um, uh, fortunately, most of these structures are preserved or uh, na, na damay sa gera pero they were um, rebuilt. So, may mga ganong pangyayari during the time. And then, after the Civil War, uh, nagkaroon naman ng federal architecture. Again, evolving from the antebellum style. But this time, um, ginawa ito, inapply ito sa uh, federal architecture or sa civic buildings. Itong klase ng architecture na to can also be seen in American colonies sa ibang bansa, like the Philippines. We also have neoclassical buildings like this. So basically, neoclassical siya with uh, Palladian style elements. Kamukha ng mga templo noong unang panahon during the the height of the Roman Empire. So yun yung ano nila, yun yung that's the look they were going for. And it also has this timeless appeal to it. Kaya nga yung mga government buildings natin right now It's uh, identified as a civic structure kapag neoclassical yung itsura niya. So, this one here is the Virginia State Capitol, which was built and uh, designed by Thomas Jefferson. Uh, familiar sa inyo yung name because Thomas Jefferson, aside from being the designer of this building and several other buildings, he, he is also one of the uh, presidents of the United States. and uh Charles Louis Cler Clarissot. So uh yan yung naging style and prevalent yan until now and even new buildings uh if it's a civic structure would draw pattern from this style. So this one is the United States Capitol. It's in Washington DC. The construction started in 1793. So it's designed by William Thornton. Ton and Henry Latrobe and Charles Bullfinch. So, in, kasi sobrang tagal nung construction nito, it has to involve three architects. So, the facade is modeled from the Pantheon um, following the neoclassical style. So, that has been the pattern so far. And uh, hanggang ngayon, may kita natin that uh, buildings, pag civic structure, pag government structure, ganyan ang ginagawang style. And means sa pati mga institutions Latin like uh, schools, um, courthouses, yan. Ganyan yung nagiging pattern. So, nauso siya during this time and until now, we have uh, an appreciation for this kind of style. Kasi very regal nga yung dating and very, uh, there's this uh, uh, feel na it's a building that houses authority. So, meron siyang ganong feel to it. That's uh, our lecture uh, regarding post-colonial architecture in uh, the United States. And uh, next in our lecture is going to be about the Industrial Revolution and the architecture styles that followed. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope that you learned from this video. And if you have any questions, you can comment. on the post or send me a message. Thank you very much for watching.